Hey, what's up guys, Garrett here. Welcome back to another video. So what's gonna go on today is we're gonna kind of follow up on a video that I did I don't know, months ago at this point. Essentially, I made a video on how to deploy a website to Firebase. And in that video, I believe that I had deployed a React website to Firebase hosting uh, using you know the, 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 the Firebase CLI. Now, since posting that video, I've gotten a good amount of requests asking for how to deploy the backend. Actually, even in other videos that I've done, I've gotten requests on how to deploy a backend. So I thought what we do today is actually take a look at how to deploy a backend. In this case, we're going to be deploying an Express API to Firebase functions. Now, normally, well, not normally, but I guess historically, what you would do is you would deploy your Express API to, let's say, a, a Linux box somewhere, whether that be you know an actual computer you have um, in your home, or if that would be in the cloud or something like that, you'd go get something like Compute Engine or, or EC2 or you know whatever it is, and you would actually have to set up the entire thing. So Google kind of abstracted some stuff away. They have a number of other services that you can use, such as App Engine or Cloud Run, which will also enable you to very quickly and efficiently uh, and effectively deploy and serve an API uh, without really knowing much about you know, Linux administration or how to set up a computer or anything like that. Another tool that they have that we're going to take a look at is called Cloud Functions and we're going to be using it through Firebase but really under the hood we're just using GCP's Cloud Functions. And what that means exactly is Google basically gives you this, this service called Cloud Functions, right? And essentially what they are are these, these like one-off functions that you can kind of do with whatever you want in. There are some limitations as there are with everything in life. Uh, but there are, you know, you can kind of have whatever code you want to execute inside of those functions and you can have them be triggered by certain things. So for example, um, with Firebase, if you're using Firebase authentication, which I am, uh, you could have that whenever a user is created, the function triggers, or whenever a user is deleted, the function triggers, or if you're using cloud storage, you could have whenever a new file is uploaded, a function is triggered. Whatever it is, there's a tons of different triggers that you can that you can pick from, depending on you know whatever you're doing. Another one of those functions, however, is HTTP, like on a request, right? So they will actually give you a URL, and you can just make a call to it, right? Same way you would make a call to an API. You'd have your, your endpoint, which is basically just your URL, and you just you make whatever the appropriate request is to that endpoint, right? So you can basically do the same thing with Cloud Functions, which means that we can pass in an entire Express app into Cloud Functions. So we basically can create this uh, microservice kind of architecture without doing very much. It's super easy to do. It's also pretty cheap, um, just in case you're kind of wondering about the cost, because I think cost, price, all that stuff should always be a consideration. So we'll do uh, GCP pricing, and I have this on my other screen, so I will bring this over really quick. Let's go to pricing, the price list, and we'll just command F for cloud functions. Let's go and take a look here. And watch this right here. So GCP, AWS, they all kind of give you like a free tier. And as part of the GCP free tier, the first 2 million invocations, an invocation is whenever the function is called, that's one invocation. So 2 million of them per month you get for free. And after that, it's 40 cents per million. Now there are other costs associated, for example, uh, somewhere here, you know, you do get it um, charged if you know you have outbound data going or happening, um, and you get five gigabytes for free. There is a charge here somewhere for a compute time right here. So the more intensive your function is, the more time it takes to execute, the more expensive it will be to run. But that should really be you know assumed if you have like an API that basically just goes and makes some calls to a database, whether that's inserting or, or reading or whatever, it's not going to take too long. So really, your main cost will likely be from this table right here, the invocations. And if you get to 2 million invocations in a month, you're probably doing something right, hopefully, 
and hopefully you're able to generate some revenue so that you can pay 40 cents for your next million. So just keep that in mind. There is a cost associated, but you do get a lot for free and it's pretty inexpensive compared to having to learn how to maintain your own server, all the security, all of the maintenance, all of the administration on top of the actual API and building that tool chain to get everything to work the way you want it to. So anyway, enough of that. Let's get into the code. And again, I got some good reviews on this way of doing it. So I'm just going to show you guys the code that I actually already have for DevGrub. So this is my actual DevGrub dev grub project here and we're just going to walk through my index.js and see how exactly I'm doing this. Um, there's really no re reason to write out the code so let's just jump into it. So the parts that we're going to be focusing are are express obviously and everything that kind of stems off of express and then there's one interesting line of code at the bottom that really makes this all kind of work. So the first thing is express right we're going to require express we're then going to have the Express app stored inside of a variable. Now, you likely already have this. And in fact, you likely also call it app. CRUD in this case, it's not just a random word that I picked out of a hat. It actually stands for create, read, update, and delete, which are the four main operations you can perform on data. So we have that, right? And again, yours is likely called app. We'll move down. And we'll have CRUD. We have these. These are basically just some configuration stuff. So this really isn't about Express. So we're kind of going to ignore those for right now. This here is my actual app. Okay. Well, technically it's not. Technically this is my actual app and CRUD is the app here. So we're actually expanding with all of these things. We are expanding on my app right here. Okay. Now from there, what's happening is that we're basically saying, okay, require the router and have it all go off of the V1 kind of path, right? Next, uh, this is for Swagger Docs, so nothing really happening there that's gonna concern us. The interesting part is this line that I accidentally scrolled to because my mouse isn't very smooth, but basically this is the Firebase line, and it comes from this up here, Firebase Functions, Okay, and this essentially is saying exports CRUD, so exports uh, from this module, the CRUD function, and we're going to say that it equals a Firebase function with a trigger coming from the HTTPS um, extension and then using the on request method. So every time this function is called, it will trigger every, sorry, Every time it's called via HTTPS, so going to the endpoint, it will trigger this app right here, which then goes to here and says, or actually it goes to all of this and says, hey, is this found here? Yes, it is. Okay, serve it. And that's essentially how we pass in an express app into uh, a cloud function. It's really, really simple to do. And so just to show you guys how we can deploy this, what we'll do is we'll type in Firebase, which is the, the CLI tool that Firebase uses, okay? You probably already have that if you're coming here uh, from something else on Firebase or if you're coming from my other video about how to deploy the front end. So we'll do Firebase, Firebase deploy. Now we could do this and it would deploy our entire app. We're not going to do that. We're going to type in only and then functions. And this is basically specifying, hey, out of all Firebase, we just want to deploy this one service, which are our functions. And you can actually, I believe, go down from there. Like, I think I can do this or something like that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to hit enter and let's see what happens. Okay. And that's literally it. That's actually all that we have to do. And to show you that that worked, let's come over here. I will bring this over let me just get the url correct i'm going to bring over postman just so we can see what's going on here we'll do v1 um, users all and the reason it didn't work is because i'm going to localhost which is currently turned off so what we'll have to do is go here just give that a go 
that also didn't work. That's because I don't have the, use, the URL correct, and I thought that I did. Here, this is correct. Let's give that a go. Also didn't work. All right, so we'll try this again. The reason that it didn't work is because I was sending a GET request, and it's actually a POST request, no big deal. But as you can see, this does, in fact, work now, right? So we can see that that did go through, which means that our deployment went through. So pretty simple. All we're doing is setting up an Express app, just like you likely already have if you're watching this video on how to deploy an Express app. And then we just pass it in to Cloud Functions on request. This line right here, that's what you need. That is the golden line. And then just run that CLI command that I kind of walked through right there. And that's pretty much it. There will be a written version of this tutorial in the description below, and it'll be up on DevGrub um, hopefully today or at the latest tomorrow. Basically, um, the, they're easier to, to record for me than they are to write, so that's why I can get a video out quicker than I can get a blog post out, unfortunately. Or maybe fortunately, or either way. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments below. Um, did you like this video? Also, do you like this kind of setup where I already have it written out and then I go through the code or would you have preferred that I wrote it out live, well not live, but on in the video, I guess, with you? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe so you can get all the other awesome videos that I have coming out. Take care. Peace.